much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Kim. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Isaacman, I'd just like to start with you. I, I guess I just wanted a little more clarity about, are you committed to having a permanent presence on the moon? Senator, I, I think the biggest thing is we need to get back there. Uh, it's been taking a very long time, and the American taxpayers have invested an awful lot. I agree lot. with you on that front. Yeah. I, I think we can take that for, for granted between me and you. But I, I guess I want to get a sense, because you know the chairman laid this out, actually, and, and the poster that he had wasn't just about getting back to the moon, but it was about sustaining a presence on the moon. And I, I just feel like I don't have a good understanding of what your actual position is right now on that. Well, I, I think, Senator, the, again, the first step to me is, is to return to the moon and determine its, its economic, its scientific, and its national security value for yeah, I, remaining I, I, there. I saw that in your, in your statement, and I, I guess, I, again, I was confused because in, in your response to the chairman, you were talking about how, you know, helium-3, this is something that could very well shift the balance of power uh, within the, uh, you know, here on Earth. What else are you looking at? Like, what, what else is in your mind right now beyond helium-3 and the impacts there when you're talking about scientific, economic, and national security? Well, Senator, that's what, I mean, that's what we need to get there to find out. You know, all, all the best science fiction movies out there have something like helium-3 as the economic justification for an enduring presence, not just sure. on the moon, but for out, throughout, you know, uh, space exploration. So I, I guess, you know, kind of as we've been talking about this, you know, moon, Mars, two priorities, you were much more definitive about saying we need to get to Mars. So I guess I just want to ask you that same question. What are the scientific, economic, and national security priorities that you see more clearly when it comes to going to Mars right now than in terms of having a permanent presence on the moon? Well, I, Senator, to be clear, I, I certainly hope in the future that we have lots of space stations, a, a full lunar outpost, a Mars outpost, and we're pushing even beyond that. I'm just saying we need to get back to the moon. We need to figure out why we need to be there, and I certainly hope why there is a reason. Why do we need to be, uh, like, uh, what, I'm getting, what I'm trying to get a sense of, you seem much more definitive about saying we need to get to Mars and putting resources towards that effort. What are the specific economic, scientific, and national security interests you see there because I, I get a sense that you have some greater clarity there than you do when it comes to the moon. Well, I, I would actually hope you're getting a, a, a sincere answer from me that we should be doing both and the other things. Now, Mars... Do you think Mars we can do both moon and the Mars on the current NASA budget? I sure hope so. NASA is, it was built to do the near impossible and have a thriving space economy in low Earth orbit and continue extraordinary science missions to kind of unlock the secrets of the universe, sir. Well, I, I guess I just want to re reinforce what the chairman said. I mean, I think we need to have much more clarity in how we're talking about what it is our objectives when it comes to the moon. As mentioned, you, we have a lot more clarity about what China's objectives are, and I, I hope that that is something that you can clarify quickly if you are confirmed. When it comes to the International Space Station, what is your perceived uh, timeline there in terms of uh, when we should be starting to bring that down? Well, Senator, I, I, first of all, I, I don't know of any reason why we should be bringing it down before what's currently scheduled. What I do think we need to do is maximize its remaining life, get as much of the high potential science and research to the station, figure out what that space economy is so when the day does come to hand it off to the commercial LEO destinations, they are in a financially you know, self-sustaining type way. And you talked about that in terms of the space economy. In terms of what should succeed the International Space Station, do you believe that that should be commercial only, or do you see uh, prospects of, of the U.S. government or a government-run space station to succeed the International Space Station? Well, right now, Senator, if we don't figure out the space economy, whether it's commercially operated or not, it's going to be entirely financially sustained by the government. So do you, but I guess I'm asking, what is your, do you have a preference in terms of, do you see a sense of need for a government run? I guess I'm just trying to ask you, what is it that NASA can do that commercial efforts can't do? Well, that's a, I mean, that's a fantastic question, Senator. I mean, the line should be drawn, again, at, in terms of NASA undertaking the near impossible challenges that, again, no company, organization, or agency anywhere in the world would be able to, would be able to undertake it. I gave a, a very uh, good example, I think, in my opening remarks on nuclear propulsion. That's something that no company would ever uh, embark upon. There is no obvious economic return. There's regulatory challenges. That's exactly the kind of thing that NASA should be concentrating its resources on. 
The last thing I just want to say here, and I know I'm running out of time, I, I, you know, I'm really uh, hard to see. I think we're all very proud of the astronauts that are here in this room. Uh, but I, I think I could speak for them and say, look, uh, we also recognize the importance of the civil servants uh, playing so many different roles for the safety and the innovation that's out there. As I expressed to you, I am concerned about how this administration has approached uh, what I believe are indiscriminate cuts at different and firings at different departments and agencies. And if you're confirmed, uh, I hope that you stand up against indiscriminate cuts. I think we're all very recognizing that there are places for efficiencies and elsewhere, uh, but we need to make sure that we're protecting the expertise that's out there.